Welcome to video 6 in our series on smart objects. Today we're going to be talking about the steps necessary to build your own service type. Most of you will be familiar with most of these terms by watching previous videos on smart objects. But as a refresher, here's the overall architecture behind smart object technology. In today's video, we will be focusing on creating the service that will connect to your backend systems. So let's get started by defining the main components of a service. The first thing we have is the service broker. The service broker will create a package for each service method mapped to the smart object, but more details on this later. The service package is an XML file that describes a method for communication with a backend server to execute along with data required for that method. Each of these service packages will describe a single service method. The data exchange using a service package can occur in both directions. Updates are sent and results are returned using the service package. Next, we have the service object. This will contain metadata about properties and methods that describe both data and type mapping between smart object data and backend system data. We also have service type. This describes methods and properties for exchanging data with backend systems. Service types are registered in the Service Broker Console. We will be going into this and how to do it in our next video. The Service Instance. An instance of a service type that communicates with backend systems and is registered with the Black Pearl server. Depending on how each service type is implemented, they can connect in different ways to a backend server. Differences can be different credentials for each instance or a different backend server of the same type, such as SQL or Oracle, etc. So how does all this come together? Smart object definitions are stored by the smart object server. This is also where service objects are instantiated to encapsulate data related to specific backend systems. Service objects then use a service instance to send data to and receive data from backend systems. This data is sent through XML payloads known as service packages. The service broker is responsible for handling the exchange of the different service packages. So how do we create this service? To create a service, we simply create a new class library in Visual Studio. Add the appropriate references. Create a service class that will inherit from the service assembly base and override four methods that are important for building out our service. They are describe schema, get config, execute, and extend. We'll go into a little more detail on those in a moment. After we're done with this, we simply build our project and register the assembly with the smart object server. We're going to go into more detail on that in our next video. There are two different implementations of a service, static and dynamic. With static implementation, a developer would have to have access to the code libraries used to communicate with the backend systems and be able to update and redeploy that code to facilitate the creation of a service. Then, the implementation of the service methods can be done through the use of code attribution. This method is usually faster to deploy than a dynamic implementation, but it can create difficulties in isolating and debugging the service code from the code handling communication with the backend server. This method is only recommended when schema changes to the backend system are not likely to occur and when a tight coupling of service object methods to the backend system is acceptable. Next, we have dynamic implementations. If a developer does not have access to recompile and deploy the code which handles backend server communication, a dynamic service implementation is required. This type of implementation is also recommended as a best practice approach to writing services. However, it would require more development time. A dynamic service is implemented in a separate .NET assembly that references the source code.smartobjects.services.service SDK assembly, as well as the assembly or web service that is used to communicate with the backend system. These backend system references can include .NET assemblies from the backend system, web services, com, dcom, or ADO.NET. As we said before, we have methods that need to be overridden to complete this service. They are the get config section, which will describe configuration parameters required by the service, such as server name, username, port number, etc. Next, we need to describe the schema. This will provide a name and description for the service, describe the service objects managed by the service, describe the properties of each service object, and describe the methods of each service object. Next, we have the execute method. 
The execute method section will be done by calling the source system's API or executing statements against the database. We also have a section for extend. This will allow the dynamic creation or definition of a service object if the backend system supports it. Here's a quick snapshot of our service class. You can see there's obviously more code here, but I've shrunk it down just so you can see the different sections where we override each one. Next, you can see in more detail the get config section. You can see here that we've also specified parameters for database, port, server, and username. In the describe schema section, the describe schema method is the most critical method to override, and like the get config section, it is called when the service instance is created or refreshed in the management console. This method tells the smart object server what service object this service handles and describes the service objects in detail, such as the properties and methods of the service object. You can see here that we've given the service a name as well as a display name and description. Next, we see the execute. The smart object server calls the execute method when a method on a service object needs to be executed. This is where code is placed to execute service object methods. The service broker calls this method to execute the appropriate logic on the backend system by the service package. Well, hopefully this gave you some more insight into both smart objects and services. To try and wrap up, remember this. The K2 server stores smart object definitions and also instantiates service objects. Then the broker exchanges packages via service instances with backend systems. I will be posting additional reference material in the How To K2 blog for this video, so check out that as well. Join me next time when we show you how to register the service that we've just built.